This is a case report of an unusual skin tumor known as a pilometricoma that presented as a head and neck malignancy. The patient was an 83 year old male who presented with this large tumor arising from the left side of the neck. This tumor was growing gradually over the past three years. He was first seen and investigated three years ago at another center and the following were the details of the workup. An FNAC was done at that point in time which suggested a diagnosis of metastatic squamous cell carcinoma arising from the left cervical group of lymph nodes. He also had a number of other reports with him that were obviously done for a search for the primary malignancy. These included a physical examination, an upper GI endoscopy and a CT scan of the head and neck area. All of these reports were inconclusive and hence a diagnosis of metastatic squamous cell carcinoma in the left cervical lymph nodes from an unknown primary was made. At that point in time, the patient was offered surgical excision but declined as he was told that it was being done purely from a palliative point of view and that the risk of complications was extremely high. Three years down the line, he was referred to us for palliative care. On examination, there was this large, painful 10 to 15 centimeter tumor arising from the left side of the neck. There were areas of ulceration noted. On further examination, however, the tumor appeared to be arising purely from the skin and clinically it was free from the deeper structures of the neck. Now, since there was an obvious discrepancy between the clinical findings of a cutaneous tumor uh, and the previous investigations that suggested a metastatic nodal malignancy, it was felt a PET CT scan might help to throw some light on the matter. And excerpts from that report include an enormously large partially calcified solid mass lesion that was flush with the skin not involving the deeper structures. It showed metabolically active ipsilateral level 2 and level 3 lymph nodes which were most likely to be metastatic. The initial diagnosis of a metastatic nodal malignancy from an unknown primary was revised with this report in mind and the possibility of a primary low-grade cutaneous tumor with metastatic uh, cervical lymph nodes was now strongly considered. The patient was offered surgery, this time with a curative intent. A wide local excision with a modified neck dissection was performed and the skin defect was closed with primary closure. The histopath report revealed the diagnosis of a pilometricoma or a calcifying epithelioma of malherbe. The tumor on pathology was 12 centimeters in its greatest diameter. All the surgical margins were free and all the nodes were reactive, that is negative for malignancy. Pilometricomas are relatively uncommon benign tumors that arise from the hair follicles of the skin at Nexia. They were first described by Melherb in 1880 and hence named after him. They are usually small but if left untreated can go to a very large size as we can see in this particular case. There are bimodal peaks in their occurrence in the first and then in the sixth decades of life and the female to male ratio is about 3 is to 2. Being uncommon, they are often misdiagnosed preoperatively and the diagnosis being missed in as many as 30% of cases described in the literature. For medical students who are going through this presentation, they will be interested to know that there are two signs that are attached uh, to this tumor, the tent sign and the teeter-totter sign. So they may want to know those when they go for the exam. And these lesions, as we see in this case, are adherent to the skin but free from underlying structures and easily resectable. And malignant transformation is rare, but it should be suspected in case they are recurrent tumors. So what is the take-home message in this case? Number one, there is no overstressing the importance of a detailed history and a physical examination. Secondly, correlation between a detailed history and physical examination and other investigations will often reveal discrepancies that could help to avoid mistaken diagnosis. An FNAC, as we see very clearly in this case, is not foolproof and it is common knowledge that false negatives as well as false positive results are well documented. And finally, a PET scan is far from fallible. In this case, it suggested a primary malignant skin tumor with metastatic lymph nodes. 
whereas the final diagnosis was that of a benign tumor with reactive, not metastatic, lymph nodes. Thank you for watching.